so come back to this uh, later half of the second half of this uh, lecture which i started on localization or rings of fractions and we want we are studying the uh, properties of this uh, ring of fractions so as usual i will use the notation s is a multiplicatively closed set in the ring a close subset using that we have defined this new ring s inverse a and we also have a ring homomorphism from here to here and that we have denoted by iota a s but i will drop this and i just write iota s our ring a is fixed so there should not be a problem in the uh, and what does it do any element a this maps to a by 1 and now what are we interested in we want to know this new ring has become better than original ring and also we want to study what are the what is the relation between the ideals of the ring a and ideals of the ring s inverse a in particular we also want to start uh, comparing the prime ideals in this ring and prime ideals of the new ring s inverse a or maximal ideals spma and spm s inverse a we want to compare this what has happened to this and also the operations on the ideal what happened to the sum ideal here and sum ideal there and so on and before this actually we should also uh, try to understand what is the relation between the units of a and units of s inverse a or non zero divisors so special elements like non zero divisors or zero divisors and so on all these we want to study slowly so first of all as i said that this this ring homomorphism this iota may not be injective and that we, i will give you some example immediately uh, and what happens when this ring also might become zero we know we want to know when will this ring become be, uh, ring become exactly zero so um, let us uh, write me easily when will a ring be zero ring when will this be a zero ring that is that means this can, a ring can be zero only when of course i am in a commutative ring and a multiplicative identity is also there ring is zero if and only if one equal to zero so what is one one is a multiplicative identity so this is if and only if multiplicative identity here is one by one and this zero is zero by one so when can this happen our relation says that these two fractions are equal if i cross multiply take their difference and that may not be zero but multiplied by some s is zero then so that means there exist s in s such that uh this one this cross multiplication is 1 minus 0 times 1 which is 1 uh, so s times 1 times 1 minus 0 times 1 this is 0 but this is same as s so the moment a multiplicative set has zero in that this ring becomes zero so i will write this statement here what we proved here is s inverse a is zero if and only if uh, zero belong to the multiplicative set s that is a hopeless situation all right because if the ring is zero then we know there is uh, there is no ideal there is no prime ideal and 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 so on so uh, that is not uh, there is not much to study there all right so uh, that is very careful now uh, i want to immediately prove the application another multiplicative set which i have two important multiplicative set i have 
I have uh, we will use it quite often for the following s equal to the unit itself this is obviously multiple multiplicative set because the unit product of two units is a unit again and the multiplicative identity is already unit ok this is one set other set is if I have any ideal a a any ideal in a then if I take s equal to 1 plus a what is this by definition this is clear uh, this is by definition you add 1 to all elements of a 1 plus a as a varies in a this is obviously multiplicatively close set because 1 is there because I can take a equal to 0 small a equal to 0 and if I take two, two elements like this 1 plus a and 1 plus b One plus b. If I multiply it out, what do I get? One plus a plus b plus ab. But both these elements are in the ideal a. Therefore, this is also in ideal a. And therefore, it is again an element in S. So therefore, this is again an element in S. So what we have checked is this multiplicative this set is multiplicatively close. These are two important things which we will use uh, the multiple uh, ok. So, first of all before I go on I want to prove very important uh, statement that uh, you, you remember what is the nil nil potent the set of the set the subset of all nilpotent elements in a ring A is called ok first of all it is an ideal so is an ideal in the ring A. So, let us check this. So, proof. So, what do you have to check? See if I have two elements let let us give this uh, nilpotent element to be named. So, this is uh, this subset is denoted by nil A or simply by N A. So, let A and B be two nilpotent elements. Then what do you want to check? To prove A plus B is also nilpotent minus also. And if I have C arbitrary element of A, then C times A is also nilpotent these are the things we have to check to check it is an ideal. But uh, this is uh, obvious because when you raise it to high power and use binomial expansion then either uh, power of so what I am saying is uh, you take for example, a plus b a plus minus b and take high power of this. So, what will be the expansion? So, this is the binomial expansion some binomial coefficients will come integers and then a power um, r times b power n minus r right. But and this is from r equal to 0 to capital N. So, up to when the power this power is small that power is big and when this power is big this power is small. So, therefore, when you choose n capital N larger than the maximum of m n where m is a power m is 0 and n is b power n is 0. Then obviously, this power will also be 0 and for this you do not have to do anything because we are in a commutative ring the same power will work for c times a. So, that proves that this is an ideal 
and now the uh, proposition I want to prove is that this is precisely so proposition very very useful um, nil set of nil potent elements is precisely the intersection of all primitives p where p belongs to a speck of it. All right, so proof. This inclusion is clear because if an element A belongs to an A that is a power n is 0, but 0 belongs to every primordial p. For some n, so for some n in n. Therefore, if once the power belongs to the primordial, then it will the idea the element will be belong to the primordial. So, therefore, that implies a belongs to P for every P. N is at least one, no? So N is no. So conversely, conversely, what do you want to prove? If I take any element in the intersection, it should be nilpotent. So let a belong to the intersection of prime ideals to prove that A is nilpotent. We want to prove it is nilpotent. So that means some power should be zero. All right. So take consider this multiplicative set generate a multiplicative set out of that 1 a a square and so on. This consider this consider the multiplicatively closed set subset generated by that one. And then we know now we have this a and then we have a suffix a. This is precisely s a inverse of a. This is s a. And then we have this ring homomorphism. So I will uh, not use this notation, we will use suffix. And this is our iota map. I will also drop in the is fixed, so I will drop in the. So now we want to prove A is nilpotent. Remember, A is nilpotent, then it will be somewhere here in the multiplicative set S. So, 0 will belong to the multiplicative set. So, there this ring will become 0 ring, right. So, now I am going to prove this by contradiction. So, what is the uh, what do you have to prove? I will show I will suppose that A is not nilpotent and get a contradiction. And contradiction to what? Contradiction to this fact A belongs to every prime ideal. So, suppose on the contrary that A is not nilpotent. Then, then 0 will never belong to this essay. No power is 0. So, therefore, 0 does not belong to this. And then we have seen that if 0 does not belong to the multiplicative set, then that means this new ring, ring of action, that is not a 0 ring. And hence, 
a suffix a is not a zero ring. But we have rem we remember we have proved that if you have a non-zero ring, then there is definitely a, at least one prime ideal. So then, spectrum of this ring is non-empty. This was Krull's theorem. So again, I will draw a map. This is here. This is here, and there is a definitely one prime ideal here. So let us call it capital P, capital Gothic P. This is a prime ideal here. Of course, prime ideal is not a whole thing. So this is a prime ideal in this ring, and now I want to. Uh, this is our iota map. This is a ring homomorphism. I want to pull back this p. So I am considering small p equal to iota inverse of this capital P. This is precisely means all those elements. So what are the elements in a? Uh, elements in p. There are all those elements a in a such that when I take iota. Of a that belongs to this capital P, but iota of a is by definition a by one. I should use a different letter because a is already used here. So this is precisely uh, B such that iota of B is which is uh, which is B by one. And this belongs to the P. So that is that. So first of all, I want to prove that this uh, inverse image is a prime ideal. So we will prove that P is actually a prime ideal in the ring A. So let us postpone this proof for a moment. We will do it immediately. And then I will say that this A cannot belong to the P, and the element A cannot belong to this P. Let us check that. So I will check this first. I will assume it is a prime ideal, uh, and then I will check this A is not in P. Suppose A is in P. Then what happens if A is in P? If A belongs to P. Then iota of A will belong to capital P by definition of this uh, contraction, but iota of A is what? It is A by one. But A is what? A was already in in the multiplicative set, so but A by one is invertible. But A by one is a unit. In a suffix a, in fact, what is the inverse you can write down with inverse one by a? Denominator a is allowed because that is in the multiplicatively closed set generated by a. So this is the inverse. So that cannot happen because p is the prime ideal in this ring. So p is proper by definition. Contradiction. To capital P is not equal to a suffix a. So we are left only to prove this fact that this one is a. If I have a ring homomorphism and I have a prime ideal in the uh, image ring, and then if I pull it back, then it's again a prime ideal. So let us prove that in general situation. So and that will finish this proof. And that would have okay. So, so this is a general lemma. So let now general situation A to B phi B a ring homomorphism.
and capital P be a prime ideal in B. Then phi inverse of capital P which is by definition what all those elements A in A such that when I apply phi to that element you should land in this given prime ideal capital P and let me write this phi inverse of capital P by small p. There is a difference between the capital P and small p they are gothic letters and I use them because Dedekind started the ideal theory. Dedekind was German and he used gothic letters and if you see older books therefore all the older books which are very well written they use gothic letters. So, uh, some people have trouble with this uh, gothic letters but uh, it, you have to practice to to draw them ok fine. So, then what what is the statement then we want to this prove that this inverse image is again a prime ideal. So, let us prove this first and then we will write down the consequences. Proof I want to prove this is a prime ideal. So, uh, to prove somebody the prime ideal I have to prove two things the one is not there and whenever the product is there at least one of the element is there. So, first note that one is not in small p why because if one otherwise one belong to p means what one belongs to p means phi of that belongs to capital P phi of 1 belongs to capital P, but capital P is a prime ideal which is therefore not a whole ring B, but what is phi of 1 which is 1? This should be 1 B and this is 1 A, this is 1 A, this is 1 A. And now you realize it is very 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 important to insist that the ring homomorphism carries multiplicative identity of the ring to the multiplicative identity of the other ring. And uh, many may sometimes I get uh, difficulties from the students uh, that uh, they do not assume this and then lot of disastrous thing happen. Some books also do not assume that one goes to one. So, uh, this course is um, not meant for these books and so on. So, one should be careful. So, that shows that this P is a proper ideal P is. So, we have checked this. Now, I want to check that if if A times B belongs to small p where A and B are arbitrary elements in A then I want to prove either A belongs to P or B belongs to P. Let us prove this. So, what do you do? Always write down the definitions what you have given and what do you want to prove. So, P belong uh, P is the inverse image of this. So, what does this mean? This means by definition of this small p phi of A B belongs to capital P. But what is phi of A B? Phi is a ring homomorphism. So, therefore, this is phi A times phi B. And these are two elements now in the ring B and their product belong to capital P and capital P is a prime ideal therefore, one of them either phi A belongs to capital P or phi B belongs to capital P. In this case that is precisely this A belongs to capital small p. And in this case, this is precisely B belongs to capital. So, it is really nothing, just a definition. So, what did we check? Oh, this inverse image is also called sometimes contraction of. So, contraction. So, I will write this is also called the contraction of, of P, capital P 
contraction. All right. So let us see what what does this mean and what what is more important for us. So that means what we have proved the following: if I have a ring homomorphism A to B, phi, a ring homomorphism. To this, we have this associated this set of prime ideals, spec A, and to this we have associated the spec of B. These are prime ideals, right? And then what we have done is, if I have an element here, capital P, then we got a, a contraction of this p this is small p here this this is the contraction of that capital p this is a prime ideal here that means we have defined a map from this set to this set please note that the arrow has reverse now this is the map and this map is also sometimes denoted by spec phi or also it is denoted by phi upper star so therefore this definition is phi upper star of capital p or this is also same in if i use this notation spec of phi of capital p this is now we remember that on this spectrum this is prime spectrum we had a zariski topology so now it might one might ask what kind of a map this is a topological space this is a topological space so what kind of a map is this so obviously we will prove that this map is indeed continuous map this is what we will prove all right so that is what we have done uh, uh, more generally also we have also the map from the ideals of a here they are all ideals they are ideals of b here and we have defined a map in this direction what is the map this is called a contraction map so any ideal b goes where just pull back its under phi phi inverse of b this map is so one has to check that this is also an ideal this is also an ideal we have to check but that is very easy to check again uh, you have to check it is a uh, it is a abelian group and also it is closed under arbitrary scalar multiplication so this is also uh, easier to check but now what might be tempted to ask what happened to the maximal ideals so what happened do we also have so now i let me go on to the next page to okay i will draw it here so spm a and spm b so if i have a capital m which is a maximal ideal in b then small m is it also a maximal ideal here this is a contraction of this so phi inverse of capital m is it true is this true i am asking obviously this is false first of all we will i will give examples but in some cases for example in the case of if both were finite type algebras over a field then it will be true but it will uh, take some effort to prove that so but before that i want to give a, a counter example here so that it is not true so consider so example i will write in this example consider the inclusion map z to q this is obviously ring homomorphism q is a field therefore what is uh, SPM SPM of Q 
that is only singleton set 0. 0 is the only ideal in the field and that is maximal ideal because it is a field. Now, what is SPM of Z? These are all maximal ideals in Z, but that is that set corresponds to the, the set of prime numbers, right? the ideal generated by a prime number, this is a maximal ideal and they are all. Now, in this I take capital P or capital M to be there is not much possibility capital M is 0. What is the inverse image? This is the inclusion map. So, uh, let me call it I. What is I inverse of capital M? I inverse of capital M is I inverse of 0, but I inverse of 0 is what? That is a kernel. This is a kernel of I, kernel of inclusion map, but inclusion map is injective. So, this kernel is 0 and this ideal 0 this is ideal 0, but this is this is a prime ideal, but it is not maximal. So, this is not in SPM Z. So, we have checked that contraction of a maximal ideal may not be maximal ideal. In fact, this is one of the difficulty in more abstract geometry, because uh, maximal ideals are not contracted to maximal ideals. So, therefore, uh, we have to consider not only finite type algebras, but more general setup uh, for studying uh, more serious algebraic geometry. All right. So, uh, also this I could have uh, this uh, the above proof I can make it little shorter the above lemma. So, so, when we have A to B ring homomorphism phi and then capital P is here and we have taken the inverse image of capital P, this is small p and I wanted to prove it is a prime ideal here, but that you can look at it this way. See here, here P is a prime ideal, then we have the quotient ring, residue class ring B by P this is an integral domain. And this composition, now this is the, uh, the natural surjective map pi and this composition now, look at the composition, this map. This is phi composed with pi. This map, what is the kernel of this map? All those elements of A which goes in P, capital P but that is precisely this. So, this is precisely the kernel of pi compose phi, but whenever you have a ring homomorphism and when you go mod kernel you get injective ring homomorphism. So, that means this composition map will factor like this. This will be A mod kernel of pi compose phi this, this is the natural surjective map and this will go inside this now. So, that means, this one, this residue class ring is a sub ring of this B by P, but B by P is integral domain and this is a sub ring, sub ring of integral domain is integral domain, therefore, this is integral domain, therefore, this is a prime ideal. So, this is, therefore, this is prime ideal. Now, if you have if you have seen the proof this way, then you will better appreciate the earlier statement that the contraction of a maximal ideal need not be maximal ideal be simply because subring of a field is not a field in general. We have seen that is precisely the example was that Q is a field, Z is the subring of Q, but Z is not a field. So, with this I will stop and I will continue this uh, study of uh, localization uh, in the next lecture. Thank you very much.